Hi guys, welcome to Tinderbox. I am Tinder and this is where I speak my truth, my whole truth, and nothing but my truth. So guys, thank you again so much for all the love you've been sharing on my videos. I really appreciate it and I've really been enjoying doing the videos. I mean, the editing part is ugh, painful, <laughs> but I've been thoroughly enjoying the video part of things. And for everyone that has been sharing my videos on Facebook, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I hope that you and yours are keeping well given the current situation and I think I speak for all of us when I say that we are sick and tired and we can't wait for things to get back to normal. Whatever that normal is, I'm more than happy to get that. Of course, things are never going to be the same. That is something that we will all have to accept and come to terms with, but uh, we definitely need whatever is left of our lives back. <laughs> So I hope that you're taking good care of you and yours and that you're keeping safe. Uh, whoever is feeling safer with masks, I hope you're wearing your mask. Whoever is feeling safer washing their hands a hundred times a day, I hope you're washing your hands a hundred times a day. And for the rest of us, <laughs> I hope you're staying alive. <laughs> now guys, this whole COVID-19 situation has basically brought up emotions that Oof, most of us didn't even know we, we, we had harbored. For me, it's really, really been trying me and I'm a very positive person. I always try to see the brighter side of things. So you can imagine when something happens and I'm like, oh shit, really, really? Like universe, really? <laughs> Now, I'm also a big believer of the law of attraction, so I am very, very aware of the fact that if I wake up feeling like shit and feeling like everything is going to the dumps, my day will be totally fucked. So I try not to jinx my day, I try to be as positive as I can. But um, a few days ago, I was in a really, really dark place and I, I want to share this with you. Now, some of you might know about my sciatic pain that I have had for a few years and it's progressively just getting worse and worse. My sciatic pain is caused by my piriformis syndrome. Now the piriformis muscle is a very tiny muscle that connects your hip and somewhere from somewhere around your hip, one side of the hip to another. And it controls your leg movement. So it's a very, very important piece of muscle and then the sciatic nerve is a big nerve that controls your leg so it goes all the way from the spinal cord down to your leg so what the piriformis muscle has been doing it's been pinching my nerve now i don't know whether it's the size of my badonka donk that has been causing the aggravation but as time has gone by it's progressively just gotten worse and more painful and it just sends this uh, it sends this deep, dull pain down my leg and sometimes I can't sleep and a few days ago I just couldn't sleep. I was up at 6am still struggling and I ended up calling 111. Now, I didn't call 999 because it's not something very serious but I wanted to go in and be seen. So I called 111 and what I expected the nurse to tell me is yes, definitely we will get you in. Now guys, I'm on very strong painkillers and nerve relaxants and I think my body has become so used to them and somehow resistant. So they're not giving me as much relief as they used to before. So, But either that or the pain is just getting worse. So I was on the phone with this woman and she kept on telling me about how this was not an emergency and about how it's a pre-existing condition so I need to book in with my GP now. The GPs are not open. So this means a backlog of patients waiting to be seen. And this pain could not wait. I was literally crying for my mother. I was in so much pain. I just, I just thought to myself, and you know when people say that your life flashes before you as you're dying? That is what happened. I first forwarded and rewinded, and I just thought to myself, if this is how I'm going to live my life, I don't want it. I don't care what is going on. I don't want it anymore. 
And after hanging up on her, she tried calling me back like seven times. But while she was trying to call me, I was rummaging through my medicine cabinet. I was going around the house just trying to figure out how I'm going to take myself out. It was that bad. And uh, I've always said if I ever got to a point of taking myself out, I would have to be considerate. So I don't want to jump off a building and splash all over the place and people have to pick me up with tongs. No. <laughs> if I ever had to do that it has to be a very neat job <laughs> and my boyfriend was on his night shift when he's doing a night shift he finishes at 7 a.m. and I was like he's about to finish work soon so in about 25 minutes he gets home and then I was just trying to visualize him opening the door and walking in expecting me to be in bed and then probably finding me in the bathtub or I was just trying to picture the whole scenario and it didn't look good. <laughs> and then I thought about the fact that I still don't have a will. So my family was probably going to bury me. And that is one thing that I don't ever want to happen. I never, ever, ever want to get buried. I want to be cremated. I'm very specific about how I want to go. And because I hadn't communicated that to my family, <laughs> I felt that it would definitely not be the right time to go. <laughs> And then I also don't have a trust. So all my policies, everything that I have has not been allocated to the people that I want it to be allocated to. So I thought to myself, oh my God. And then it's COVID-19. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going to leave such a mess. <laughs> so I pulled myself back. I somehow ended up going to sleep. I can't remember what happened. Probably I was just in so much pain that I ended up going to sleep. And uh, when I woke up, I wrote this very long text message to my family members. We have a WhatsApp group. I wrote them a very long text message telling them exactly what I want to happen if I die. I give very specific instructions on what I want to happen. If I die in Edinburgh, I want to be cremated in Edinburgh. If I die in Nairobi, I want to be cremated in Nairobi. This, that, this, that, this, that. This is how much I have in life insurances. And I'm going to set them up in trust. I'm going to do this. Mom was like, you are going to outlive all of us she actually got so pissed she left the whatsapp group that is how mad she was but i was on a mission i was like no i don't want to die irresponsibly i want to be able to let everybody know and actually i think a day after i did ask my boyfriend if he was going to be the trustee of my insurance policies just so that he can be in charge of my estate and deal with my crazy family and make sure that everything is done as per my wishes so it was very comical but it just came from a very very dark place and that little situation made me realize how out of touch i was with myself how out of control i was and I've never wanted to be out of control. I'm a control freak. Anybody that knows about me knows that I want things done a specific way and I'm very rigid. But I came to the realization that I'm just existing. I don't have my affairs in order. I don't have everything written down and I haven't confirmed what I wish to happen if I'm not here. It also got me reflecting on my health as well. I don't think I take time for myself. I mean, if you looked at my social media, you'd probably think I party like a rock star, but I don't. <laughs> that is just a small fraction of my life. Most of my life is spent in the office. I sometimes go to the gym. I sometimes meet with my friends. I sometimes go out clubbing. I sometimes spend time communicating with friends, but I need to be more intentional. And I came to the sad realization that I've not been living an intentional life. I've not been intentional with uh, everything I do. I've not been intentional with uh, how I take care of myself. I've not been intentional with the relationships I'm building. I've not been intentional with the way I treat my body. Now, a while back, I was always going to the gym. I was very, very active. And I used to go to the sauna almost every day. And it's always gave me that oomph that I needed then I 
became a mortgage broker and I got so busy and the money was so much and you're working too hard and making the money but your body suffers for it. So I think that is where I probably started getting the health issues and then of course some weight gain happened and I just couldn't be bothered anymore. So I don't think that I've been treating myself right emotionally, mentally and physically. I still feel like there's so much I can give myself and that's where I've done a U-turn <laughs> so right now I'm not trying to get an out I'm actually trying to stay in but in my own terms and conditions that is how I want to live my life I want to basically live a life that aligns with my values and a life that enables me to make better decisions for myself and when I'm thinking about intentional living, I'm thinking about what makes me happy. I've always said, if I do something for myself that makes other people happy, that's fine. And that is exactly what I want to do. And I want to be very intentional. So what are my values? What do I believe in? I'm a great believer in giving what I want to receive. I'm a great believer in fairness. And I feel that karma is definitely a bitch. So I have to give what I want to receive. Your vibe attracts your tribe. So being fair should be one of my very, very core values. The second one is living my truth. So I don't want to hold back on anything. I want to be able to speak my mind and I want to be able to mean what I say. I don't want to find myself in a situation where I'm saying I shoulda, coulda, woulda. No. If I feel that something needs to be said or something needs to be done, I want it to be true to me and I want to live it. So being true to myself is very vital. The third one is prioritizing myself over everyone else. So before I make a decision, I have to think to myself, what does this mean for Tinder? How does this benefit me? How does this enrich me? How does this make me a better person? So what am I going to do to make sure that these values are tangible? How do I put myself to task and how do I hold myself accountable every time I feel like I'm not living intentionally? How do I stop and say, hey, hello, hi Tinder, hey, I'm right here. What are you doing? What does it mean to you? How is it going to benefit you? So I have a dream board that I've had for a while. <laughs> and that dream board, everything on that dream board, I will share, I will do a vlog on my dream board. But a dream board is basically where you can have pictures or anything that really matters to you. Like if you have a dream house or a dream car or any quotes or any motivational shit that really means a lot to you, you can have it on there. And it's a visual way of holding yourself accountable. Like one of the things on my dream board was starting my own vlog. <laughs> I'm already doing it right now. Another thing was loving myself before loving everybody else. And that is something that I've tried doing, but I'm going to be more intentional about. Uh, another one was uh, my dream car, which is a BMW X6. I've started with a Mini, so <laughs> I will gradually get to the X6 in a few years, hopefully. <laughs> and um, another one is about friendship. Another one is about taking care of my health. And the quote is, what you eat in private, you wear in public. And that is so true. So it is definitely going to be part of my intention on living because as well as loving myself, I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to take care of this shell. When people say Tinder, the first thing they think is me, how I look. And then they think about the rest. So I'm definitely going to take care of this. And in the past few days, I've been spending an hour, an hour and a half every night stretching, doing my core exercises, and uh, just listening to positive podcasts and audiobooks while I do that, listening to some soft jazz. And I've been taking time for myself because I've noticed that I spend so much time procrastinating and I really don't take a break and say, okay, Tinder, what do you need for today? What about you? Have you done this? How is your mind? How is your mental health? Have you meditated? Have, what have you eaten today? And holding myself accountable for everything I put in my mouth, be it a drink or be it food, I want to make sure that it's going to nourish me. 
it's there for my benefit. And of course I can be naughty every now and then, but I have to know that there are consequences. And the only way to mitigate the consequences is by moving, by being active. Because if I sit here and eat as much as I've eaten in the last few years, I will be rolling out of the house in a ball, like a hedgehog, like a massive hedgehog. So that is what will happen. So I want to be intentional in how I treat this shell of mine by what I eat, what I think of it. I've always thought very highly of my body. <laughs> yes, I'm one of those people. I mean, you can't tell me shit about my body. Like seriously, I am very, 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 very happy with all this. <laughs> But I know that most of it has to go. <laughs> or else this sciatica is not going anywhere. So I have to take care of my body. I also have to take care of what in here. So I have to be very intentional with who I surround myself with. I have to look at everybody around me and think, what value does this person add to my life? Is this a positive relationship? Now, I don't believe in frenemies. I'm not that kind of girl who will keep your enemies closer, no. I only surround myself with people that I trust and people that I love and people that I care about. And if for any reason I feel like retracting from that relationship, I'm very, very honest about it and I just walk away. That's me. And I have to be okay with that. I have to be able to say, you know what? This is definitely not working for me right now and this is definitely working for me. So those are some of the things that this episode this really dark episode made me think about and i'm definitely going to do a follow-up so this will not be the first and last video i do about this because i have to tell you how i'm holding myself accountable i have to update you on how my shell is doing how in here is doing and i will let you guys know how i'm getting on because this whole situation came from a very dark place but i feel that being the perfectionist i am and wanting to hold myself accountable for the situation i will leave behind when i die i feel that that actually pulled me out of a very 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 bad place and if you feel that this has actually touched you in a way that you feel that you can share with me that would really help me it would definitely help me because sometimes when you're going through a really hard time it's good to know that you're not alone it's good to know that there are people who have gone through that really dark episode and let me tell you something to pull yourself out of that is absolutely powerful it's powerful stuff because I was just seeing red. I couldn't see how I can pull myself out of that. And sometimes you hear about people doing something crazy and you're like, oh my God, but he had such a great life. Or, oh my gosh, he had such a great family. Or, oh my God, he had such a good job. Oh my God, he had so much money. How would he do that? Now I know, I know how people get to that point. And it could just be a roadblock that somebody else would never consider a roadblock but it is to you. And it's very relative. That dark abyss is very, very relative. So <laughs> that's it guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I will see you guys again next week. Okay, bye. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>